Well, just a few short days ago, ESPN personality Emily Kaplan reported that during their exit interviews, a handful of significant Seattle Kraken players told Ron Francis that either Dave Hackstall goes or they go. So today we're asking the big question, was there a mutiny on the Kraken? Hey everybody, welcome in to Clearing the Benches, your one-stop shop for daily fresh hockey content. If you go ahead and hit your subscription button right now, every single day we'll bring you in a new hockey video to enjoy. Well, uh, from Ron Francis' standpoint, you know, if one or two guys say, you know, we don't really like the coach and maybe, you know, you could move on from him, that's one thing. And, you know, you could negotiate a little bit, talk to the players, maybe ease them off the ledge. But if you got a bunch of guys, and especially if they all came to you at the same time with some unity, now you got to listen and now you got to take action. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, in the interviews, you could see Ron Francis said he did not want to let Dave Hackstall go. He said he was letting go of a good person, a good hockey coach. Uh, you know, they talked a little bit maybe about how injuries kind of derail their season this year. But, you know, I'm sure we're going to hear more about it in the weeks to come. Uh, much like the Mike Babcock situation with the cell phones. Uh, maybe there was some weird stuff going on in Hackstall, you know, or maybe he was just too much of a taskmaster. And at, you know, some point you lose the locker room. Now on to losing the locker room. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's about six or seven guys that are signed for the next couple of years. So I'm assuming, you know, if some guy's a UFA, he doesn't care who the coach is next year if he's not coming back. So, the, you know, the voices that went to Ron Francis and said all this, I'm going to assume that there's going to be some guys on the list we're about to tell you that were probably the ones in the room saying he goes or I go. Now, one of the guys that I do not believe it is is Vince Dunn. I saw the interview with Vince Dunn. Uh, they asked him straight out, if they thought that Hackstall had lost the locker room. And he said no. Uh, he said that the players were all, you know, in jive with what Hackstall was saying. But he said for sure uh, that they didn't, you know, lose the room. They weren't, you know, just tuning them out. They weren't just saying, yeah, whatever. Uh, as a matter of fact, he even went on to say that the players really engaged and they did everything that the coaches had said. So maybe this was a little bit more of a coaching situation than just personalities, but it sounds like personalities were definitely a big part of it. Uh, when I look at some of the other quotes, um, Vince Dunn said he said something and he looked, you know, pretty much into the camera when he said it. He said, we didn't work smart. We worked hard. And, you know, that's a good quote. You know, it, there's always the work smarter, not harder uh, expression. And a lot of people go by that. And, uh, you know, it's a good rule of thumb. If you can work smarter, you don't have to work harder. But uh, you start to wonder when you hear a, a message like that, how guys may uh, may have been going on in the locker room, what was going on in there. Maybe, you know, guys thought they were working smarter. They were just kind of taking their foot off the gas a little bit. Uh, you don't know. Maybe, you know, five or six guys, I'm not going to say they all conspired to get rid of the coach. But, you know, maybe a bunch of guys that all hang out together don't like the coach. Again, they're just not going to put their best effort uh, forth during a game. So when I was looking at the list of players that possibly I don't know anything about who said what. I am just speculating here. And I went to Cap Friendly and I looked at the Seattle Kraken situation in the future. And I'm thinking a guy, like I said, he's either going to have one, two, maybe three more years of term on his contract if he wants to coach out so bad. So when I was looking at some of the names on this list, you're looking at like Andre Burakovsky, $5.5 million for three more years. Three more years is an eternity if you don't like your coach. Jordan Eberle, $5.5 million for two more years. Jaden Schwartz, $5.5 for two more years. Uh, Bjorkstrand, $5.4 for two more years. Jared McCann, $5 million for three more years. Um, Tanev. Now, Tanev doesn't seem like the type of guy he's going to cry over spilt milk. And I'm not saying this wasn't a big deal. Maybe something happened in the locker room they haven't uh, divulged yet. And maybe when it comes out, it will be a big deal. 
But I just don't see Brandon Tanev as the type of guy who's going to go in and he's going to tell Ron Francis he goes or I go. I, I would think Tanev looks like he's the type of guy who's just going to go along with whatever's going on unless it seriously, seriously, personally affects him. And he looks like he's pretty thick-skinned, so I don't think a guy like Hackstall may have broken him. Uh, when I look at the other names on here, Vince Dunn, $7.3 million for three more years. Uh, you look at the Vince Dunn interviews, he didn't really look like he had a problem with Hackstall at all. He was really, you know, kind of putting it on the players, saying that the players, you know, needed to squeeze a little more juice out of themselves uh, to do a better job. And then you have Philip Grubauer, almost $6 million, $5.9 million for three more years. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine guys that are all going to be here for at least one most of them two and three more years. Again, if you don't like your head coach and you've already been through this for two years and you say, we're done, this is when guys could go to, you know, Ron Francis in their exit interview and you would say, you know, give an ultimatum. Uh, you don't usually give ultimatums in your exit interviews. You usually say, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to work on my game in the off season. I hope to improve and next year. I hope we have a better year. Um, so as far as the guys on this list, you know, and she said a significant handful, I'm going to say that's three, four or five guys. You got, you know, a bunch of guys on this list. I'm going to say some of the names on this list may have been the ones that said to Ron Francis, get him out of here or get me out of here. Uh, so that's going to do it on my uh, Mutiny on the Kraken video. Let me know what you think. Maybe you know more than I do about the situation. Maybe you're up in Seattle. Uh, you got a little bit uh, more knowledge about it than I do. Uh, if you do, please put it down in the comments section. Let me know what you think about Dave Hackstall or who do you think that the Kraken would hire as their next head coach. If you could put that all down in the comments section. If you could like the video, hit the subscription video, uh, the button rather. And as we always do here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.